Hello, Mr. Chris. Hi, Mr. Manny. <laughs> Congra congrats on Laurel Canyon, an immersive look at how dreams, passion, arts, and music collide to give us this magical moment in music history. Thank you. I just spoke on it, you know. Oh, they, I know. They did, they did this. The, the, the producers and director did a wonderful job. Wonderful. And it's such, a, it's such an honor to talk to you. I love the birds. I grew up in the Philippines, uh -huh. the miles away, different culture, and yet your music transcends, and that's the power of music. Thank you. I'm very blessed to have been a part of that band. Very lucky, very blessed. So what got you in, interested in joining the documentary? Oh, I uh, believe me, Manny. I mean, they uh, contacted me. Uh, and having lived in Laurel Canyon at that particular time, uh, it was, I, I have wonderful memories, of course. So when the, I got the phone call, I, I jumped on it. I'd love to have given my input as to what it was like living there then. Well, I love how the documentary kind of mapped the birds' trajectory, right? From Bob Dylan-esque to Hillbilly Rock. Uh, tell us more about that. Well, um, you know, we all came out of folk music, Manny, and, and uh, uh, as, as my uh, bandmates, especially Roger McGuinn, will always say, you know, we, we really were a folk singers. I was a bluegrass player, and then we plugged in, uh, having been just captured uh, by the Beatles. It was just, as, as we all were my age, enamored by the Beatles. It was so... Uh, uh, just, just amazing when they were on the Ed Sullivan show. That's what started the whole change in the whole culture and the music and everything. So the Bob Dylan stuff, we just fell into purely accidentally. It was a perfect song to do. And, and we did it as we, we just plugged in basically and changed, the, changed it around so people could dance to it. The way Bob wrote it was like a, a, a country song. It was a very straight two, four bluegrass type song. And uh, Roger McGuinn changed the, the time of it so people could dance. And so that's really what made the difference. That is great. And also, I love how the documentary also mapped um, all these things. I mean, civil unrest, uh, man on the moon, the Woodstock. I mean, to create this, this magical moment in time. Um, tell us more about that. That, that. Paint that picture for us. Well, the picture was a quite beautiful uh, from the get-go in the early 60s, quite idealistic. and. Uh, uh, Unfortunately, up until around 1969, it started to uh, get a little darker, and uh, we had a pretty tough year in 1969. Vietnam was totally a, a debacle. It was just falling apart, uh, the Vietnam War. Uh, the uh, the uh, Altamont concert, I believe, was after Woodstock. Yes, it was, yeah. Uh, which was really terrible, and the um, Manson murders. This is all happening in this one summer period right. of 69. The only saving grace of that year was the moon landing. Yeah. And that was just fantastic. But that was the end of the 60s, 1969. Mm. All that beautiful, the, uh, the idealism and everything, which is all good things, but uh, it didn't quite sustain itself yeah. somehow. And that's a, a different discussion <laughs> uh, where where uh, we, we just messed all of that up. So, Mr. Chris, what do you think of the current music, of uh, the current state of music today? I couldn't tell you, Manny. I don't follow it. I listen to Frank Sinatra now, and I listen to the music my parents listened to. I love the old country music. I love the old bluegrass, the old folk music, and old blues. And I still love all the uh, 60s rock and 50s rock. Yeah. New stuff I can't tell you because I'm not really looped into it. I've heard some great young bands. There was a band Tom Petty was working with called The Shelters. I thought were wonderful. And I think they're still around. Yeah. But they were very good. But I couldn't tell you about any other groups. It's such oh. a different uh it's such a different um situation now as far right. as music and marketing and all of the above, right? Exactly. Now my last question when you look back at that moment in time, what was the thing that you missed the most? Oh my gosh, you know, um, I loved having the freedom uh, when we were in the studio to be able to do pretty much what we wanted to do. Uh, we did, we were never around uh, producers or uh, that ilk to saying you need to do this to have a success. 
and uh, we followed our own instincts. And the da Mr. Tambourine Man was a blessing, just divinely sent. And it worked. It's a number one single all over the country, all over Europe, and uh, some other songs we had. Then we, we started to develop as a band, and we started writing our own stuff. And we went from covering Bob Dylan to writing songs uh, like So You Want to Be a Rock and Roll Star at Eight Miles High and things like that. And we really turned into a great band. So it was, it was exciting from 1965 to 68. It was fantastic. I mean, from my viewpoint as, as a bass player, beginning out as a bass player that didn't sing and then singing and then writing songs and uh, all of the above. So it was a, it was a wonderful time. Oh, well, thank you so much, Mr. Chris. Good luck on everything and stay Thanks, safe. Thank you, Manny. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye now.